In the previous video, you have learned how to find probabilities and solve word problems involving the normal distribution using the table of cumulative probabilities in the standard normal distribution. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make use of the p-norm and the q-norm functions in R in problems involving the normal distribution. If you do not have R yet installed, here's a quick recap on how to install it in your computer. Now to download R, go to Google and search for CRAN space R. Once the results are out, go to Comprehensive R Archive Network. Or simply go to http colon double slash cran .r projectorg Once you're on the website, simply choose your operating system as Windows or Mac. If you're using Windows, click Base or click Install R for the first time. Either of the links will lead you to a window that displays the latest release of R. Click Download R for Windows, save the installer, and then install R. If you're using Mac, look for the latest release, click that link, save the installer, and then install R. Once R has already been installed, you may open it and you may begin typing. The PNR function in R returns the cumulative probability of random variable X in the normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So if you have a standard normal distribution with mean mu which is equal to 0 and standard deviation sigma which is equal to 1, then we may make use of the p norm and then in parentheses the value of z, comma 0, comma 1. Or simply make use of p norm and then in parentheses the value of z. And that returns the cumulative probability of z. So if you're asked to find the probability that the standard random variable z to be less than let's say 0 0.47, just type p norm and then open parenthesis 0.47, close parenthesis and then press the enter key. Just note that the p norm function is like finding the cumulative probability in the table of the cumulative probabilities in the standard normal distribution. So if you're asked to find the probability that the standard random variable z to be greater than a specific value of z, find first the cumulative probability of that specific value of z and then subtract it from 1. So if you're asked to find the probability that the standard random variable z to be greater than let's say 0 0.30, just type 1 minus p norm and then inside the parenthesis 0 0.30. Press the enter key and it will give you the probability that z is greater than 0 0.30. And if you're asked to find the probability between two standardized scores, let's say z sub 1 and z sub 2, where z sub 2 is greater than z sub 1, just find the cumulative probability of z sub 2 first, and then subtract it with the cumulative probability of z sub 1. So if you're asked to find the probability that the standard random variable z to be between, let's say, negative 1.25 and negative 0.04, just type p norm. And then in parenthesis, negative 0.04 minus p norm. And then in parenthesis, negative 1.25. On the other hand, if it is the other way around, wherein you're asked to find z given a cumulative probability, then use the q norm function. As it is the quantile function of the normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. In short, it gives a value of x given the cumulative probability or the quantile, the mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So if you have a standard normal distribution in which mu is 0 and sigma which is 1, just type q norm and then in parentheses the cumulative probability comma 0 comma 1. Or simply q norm and then in parentheses the cumulative probability. And this is the reason why I said in the previous video, However, actually in the next video, I'll show you that z equals negative 1.64 is better than negative 1.65 is because when rounded off to two decimal places, the exact value of z that gives the cumulative probability of exactly 0 0.05 when rounded off is actually negative 1.64 and not negative 1.65. Anyway, so if you're asked to find the value of z in which the cumulative probability is 0 0.0119, just type Q norm and then open parenthesis 0.0119. Close parenthesis and press the enter key. And it will give you the value of Z in which the cumulative probability is 0.0119. And if you're asked to find the value of Z given its area to the right, 
Find first its cumulative probability, which is on the other side of that z, by subtracting that given area from 1, and then that will be the value that you put inside the q-norm function. So if you're asked to find the value of z in which the area to the right is 0 0.8708, just type q-norm and then in parentheses, the cumulative probability which is 1 minus 0 0.8708. And if you're asked to find two standardized scores, let's say z sub 1 and z sub 2, given their area in between, which is in the middle of the distribution, find z1 first by getting its cumulative probability, which is half of 1 minus the given probability. Then to find z sub 2, just get its cumulative probability, which is the sum of the given probability plus half of 1 minus the given probability. So if you're asked to find, let's say, z sub 1 and z sub 2 in which the probability in between, let's say, is 0 0.70, just type Q norm and then half of 1 minus that given probability. So that is half of 1 minus 0 0.7. So that is 0 0.15. And then to find z sub 2, just type Q norm and then in parentheses, that given probability, which is 0 0.7, plus that 0 0.15, Close parenthesis and press the Enter key and that will give you Z sub 2. In finding the p-value, it's very similar. That is, if the value of Z is positive, meaning the area to the extreme is on the right, just use 1 minus p-norm and then the given value of Z. On the other hand, if Z is negative, then its area to the extreme is on the left, just use p-norm and then the given value of Z. And when it is two-sided, when it is positive and negative, just add the two probabilities. One when z is negative, and one when z is positive. Or simply multiply to two any of the p-value. When z is positive, multiply to two. Or when z is negative, then multiply to two. In dealing with the problems involving the normal distribution, remember that the p-norm function gives the cumulative probability of random variable x from a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Meaning we don't have to standardize x anymore. Just go right away with p-norm and then in parentheses the value of x, comma, and then the values of the mean which is mu and the standard deviation sigma. Like for example, if the mean mu is 4.80 and sigma which is 1.17, to find the probability that a random variable x is to be less than 2.30, just type p norm and then in parentheses 2.30 and then do not forget the value of mu and sigma which is 4.80 and 1.17. Then if you're asked to find the probability that a random variable x to be greater than 5.97, so just use 1 minus p norm and then 5.97 and then again do not forget the value of mu and sigma which are 4.80 and 1.17. And to find the probability that a random variable x to be between 2.11 and 7.14 just type p norm and then 7.14 the value of mean and standard deviation which are 4.80 and 1.17 minus p norm and then 2.11 comma and then the value of mu and sigma again which are 4.80 and 1.17 similarly if you're finding x given the cumulative probability just use the q norm function so if you're finding x in which the cumulative probability is 0 0.10 just type q norm and then in parentheses 0 0.10 comma, and then still the mean and standard deviation, which are 4.80 and 1.17. And if you're asked to find x sub 1 and x sub 2, in which the area in between is 0.95, which is in the middle of the distribution, find x sub 1 first by getting half of 1 minus that given probability. So half of 1 minus 0 0.95. So that's 0 0.025. So we may make use of q-norm, and then 0.025, then the mean and standard deviation, which are 4.80 and 1.17. And to find x sub 2, just get the sum of the given probability, which is 0.95, 
plus that probability which is 0.025. Then do not forget the value of mu and sigma which are 4.80 and 1.17. Note here that in a continuous probability distribution, just like the normal probability distribution, the probability that a random variable x to be exactly equal to a specific value is always equal to 0. Because the probability that that random variable x which is exactly equal to that specific value is represented by a line. And since probability represents an area in a continuous probability distribution just like the normal distribution, and we know that a line has no area, so in other words, the probability that it's exactly equal to that value is zero. Thus, the probability that the standard random variable z to be exactly equal to a specific value is always equal to zero. So, if you're asked to find the probability that the standard random variable z to be exactly equal to a specific value, let's say 1.6, that probability is equal to zero. Thus, it follows that when you're asked to find the probability that the random variable z to be less than or equal to that 1.60, and since the probability of z equal to 1.60 is zero, then the probability of less than or equal to 1.60, which is the same as the probability as z is less than 1.6, plus the probability that it is equal to 1.6, is the same as the probability that it is z less than 1.6. In other words, we may just always disregard the equality sign, since the probability of a random variable equal to a specific value is always zero. Anyway, as for a short exercise, you may answer the items on the next slide. Just pause the video and once you're done, you may resume playing to check if your answers are correct. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned the quick ways on how to deal with the probabilities involving the normal distribution using R. Thank you for watching.